السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله مول النعم والشكر له على ما خص منها وعم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آلهم وصحبهم أجمعين أما بعد رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم بسط علينا رحمتك وانشر علينا من حكمتك وافتح لنا فتوح العارفين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم أمين رب العالمين من يبرس Respected brothers and sisters, welcome back, alhamdulillah, to another lesson of and establish prayer. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَةِ You'll find this in so many places. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا And then in another place, Allah says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ But the one that we took from is from Surah Al-Ankabut when Allah said, أُتْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ And recite that which has been revealed upon you, inspired to you, O Muhammad, from the book, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ and establish prayer. In salata, indeed salat tanha prohibits and forbids anil fahshai wal munkar. It prohibits and forbids immorality and that which is unknown to the tradition. Wala dhikrullahi akbar, wallahu ya'lamu ma tasma'un. Alhamdulillah. And we are enjoying from those fruits. However, in our previous lesson, we talked about the obligations of wudu. Wa qulna anna fara'i the obligations of wudu they are seven as we explained the obligations of wudu they are seven and in al ashmawiya we explained that there are things which he did not include in the seven um obligations of wudu but then later on he mentioned them for example like in terms of making sure that the hair on the face is filled with water as long as you can see through your skin and ensuring that your fingers your fingers are um, they go through one another so that water can can go through them you can rub through things like those which they meant which he mentioned separately but today inshallah ta'ala today inshallah ta'ala after understanding all of the obligations of wudu we are going to look at the sunnas of wudu just the sunnahs of wudu and there is something very very um profound that we need to take from this is that you notice that there are actions which you might think they're complete if you do them in your obligations of the wudu itself but the reality is that some of them some of those actions are divided and bits of the actions of the action is kept in the sunnahs while others the other one the other uh, bits of it is kept in the fadail the virtues of wudu because remember when it comes to wudu we're talking about three parts wudu has three parts he has the obligations lil wudu faraid wa lil wudu sunan wa lil wudu fadail faraid wa sunan wa fadail wudu has the obligations of it, wudu has the sunnahs of it, sunnahs of the actions, and the same wudu has fadail, the virtues, the actions which are known to be virtues of wudu. But then at the same time, there are certain parts of wudu which could not be complemented and complete without all of these three. I'll give you an example. For example, like wiping your head. There's a part, there's a part where it's obligation, and then there is an action of the same of when it comes to wiping the head, which is sunnah. And there is an action which is known to be a fadila at the same time. What does this entail? Is that wudu would not be complete, basically, until you have all of those, you understand all of those three parts of wudu. Aqsamu wudu thalatha The divisions of wudu the three of the divisions of wudu and they are the we said the fara'id which are the obligations then we said the sunans of wudu the sunnas of wudu then we said the fada'il the virtues of wudu now looking at the previous um the obligations of wudu the fara'id al wudu you notice that when we were re- reading from um, al ashmawiya which is the main text he says that wa mashu jami'i al ra'si and wiping the entire head now as a faridah as an obligation if you wipe all over your head that's fine 
you've wiped all over your head, isn't it? Whether you do this, it's fine. But then there is a certain method of wiping over the head. And from the sunnah, we'll come to understand. When you read the Ibn Ashir text, Al-Murshid Al-Mu'inu Ala Daruriyi Min Ulumiddini, you find that as Ibn Ashir explains, he explains that there are only seven sunan of wudu. ليس هناك إلا سبع سنن للوضوء. That's how you understand. لكن الأصح, the most um, the most accepted and that which is correct is that there are eight. There are eight sunnas of wudu. Now notice, this is how they go. There are seven obligations of wudu plus one is equal, is equals to eight, and those eight are known to be the sunnas of wudu. Seven. Eight. What about the fadail? We have 15 virtues of wudu and we're going to discuss them in a different discuss them in a different lesson. But today, inshallah ta'ala, let's look at the sunan. Now, when it comes to the sunan, majority of the things that we do, there are things that you keep on asking yourself, are they necessary? Do we have to do them? And I'm gonna read from both Al Mayara, which did a sharh Muhtasar al Dur Thameen. والمورد المعين على الضروري من علوم الدين على على شرح المرشد المعين على الضروري من علوم الدين. You notice that Al Mayara Al Fasi when he was explaining there are things that he was explaining in regards to um, the the sunnahs of wudu perhaps which you might not find which you might not find in the um, Ashmawiya text in the Ashmawiya text and that which you find is for example where is it Allah Musta'an غسل اليدين أولا إلى الكوعين غسل اليدين أولا إلى الكوعين and what does it mean it is to wash the two hands all the way to the wrist الكوع كوع is known to be the wrist the bone in between where the wrist is you see this more like a little eyeball bone here and then you have the hooks that literally hold onto your wrist that is known to be الكوع is known to be al kur Now the first sunnah that we are talking about is washing the hands. But then you find that in Ibn Ashir over here in, in, in Al-Ashmawiyah, uh, Shaykh Al-Ashmawi Al-Rifai, he does not give, a, give us an explanation in regards to that. But when it comes to, um, to Al-Mayyara, he explains to us that Al-Ula ghaslu liyadayni fi ibtida'i al-wudu'i qabla dukhulihima fi al-ina'i. He gives us a very, very clear explanation, first of all, by saying it is to wash the two hands at the very beginning of your of the wudu. Basically, you do not start the wudu without washing the hands. Before you insert them fill in the um, the tool or the utensil that you're using to do wudu. So if you're using a bowl, if you're using a bucket, if you're using a mud, which is the, the measuring um, cup which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had. No matter what it is, as long as you are going to dip your hand in, and that is the sunnah by the way. Now understand, as you do wudu, the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to do wudu on his mud. Now that little mud was literally enough for him to do what? To do wudu. But then you notice that today is a bit different. It depend, First of all, it depends on the size of the person and all of those. We're going to come to all of those, inshallah ta'ala. However, what we're trying to mention is that the sunnah is to dip your hand if the opening of the utensil, basically, let's say a bow, the opening surface of the bow, the open surface is quite huge, isn't it? You can fill in two hands without hesitation. But then how about if you have a water bottle? Can you dip your hand in? No, you can't. But as long as if you can dip your hand, then remember, you're going to have to wash your hands separately before you insert them. All right. Then he un explains to us something really important. وَقَوْنُهُ سُنَّةً عَلَى الْمَشْهُورِ And it is that it's a sunnah according to the mashhur of the madhab, the popular opinion of the madhab, the most accepted opinion of the madhab. And that is according the أَنْ وَهَذَا هُوَ الرَّاجِحِ That is the most authentic of what we have of the madhab, the, the madhab that is a sunnah. لكن he says that وَفِي كَوْنِهِ مُتَعَبَّدًا به لم يط... لم يطلع على حكمه على حكمته and also we need to understand that it is a ta'abud it is a ta'abud because there is no wisdom that has been derived out of the action itself what does that mean what do i mean هناك بعض العبادات هي تعبديه وليس هناك حكمه وراءها 
There are some ibadat which do not have any wisdom behind them, but they are just a means of worship. They are known to be worship, which we call them that we do these actions ta'abbudan as worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now when it comes to washing the hands, it is sunnah even if you've done your wudu like two hours ago and you were awake, you did not touch any najis or anything, then once you go to do wudu again, you begin with that sunnah. And when we say a sunnah, ala hasabi madhhabina, na'ni annaha sunnatun mu'akkada. We mean that it is a sunnah mu'akkada. So while you do that, you first wash the hands out of the utensil. You don't insert them in the utensil. But then we'll be like, hang on, isn't it I've had my hands um, very clean for the past two hours? Do I really have to wash them separately? Yes, you do, because it is ta'abud, it's worship, which we cannot question. There is no wisdom behind it. It's not like we are told to do something and you attain the wisdom. You have to understand this. When Allah commands something, for us is to follow and we don't have a choice. Exactly like Abu Ali ibn Abi Talib, كما قال, لو كان الدين بالرأي لأمرت الناس بالمسح على, بالمسح على أسف في, في أسفل الخف بدلا من أعلاها. If, if, if this deen was according to people's opinions, ra'i, or maybe what they understand, their understanding, without having any laws from Allah directly, any divine law, then wiping beneath the khuf would have been much better than wiping um, on top of the khuf because that's where the dirt is because you step on that part, on that side of the khuf, isn't it? It's on your feet. But why should you wipe the top of your foot rather than the bottom of your foot? So you understand it's all about ibadah and accepting that Allah has commanded us to do something specifically. Now when it comes to washing the hands as well, the same thing applies. We don't ask anything. And something which is ta'abud, something which is ta'abud is غير معقول المعنى it does not have to have any wisdom nor is the meaning of it understood by the mind the mind cannot fathom the mind is limited للعقل حد للعقل حد the aql has a had a limit you cannot cross it لا يمكن تجاوزها you cannot cross that limit remember that غير الأمر مستحيل يعني that's that's what it is so that is in the case though however ويغسلهما من كان نظيف الجسد اوكي ويحتاج في غسلهما الى نية ويغسلهما مفترقتين when that person is washing his palms literally his hands up all the way up to the wrist he has to make sure that first of all his body is clean his body is clean basically you have no najasa how about if my hands had najasa would it still be sunnah لا it would not be sunnah anymore it will be fard you have to wash your hand because it's a it's a fard act and while you wash them your niya begins then your intention begins then your intention of washing your hands begins as you start doing that for the entire wudu now that is number one we said that there are seven number two of what we have is over here, as you find on um, al Sheikhna Al Ashmawi Al Rifai Rahimahullah, Yaqulu, the second thing is Al Madmada. And what is Al Madmada? Al Madmada, it is to gargle water. Idhalu al Ma'i fil Fam, what a hari kihi, what a hari kihi, Al 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 Yumna, what a hari kihi fil fil Yumna, well Yusra. What is it? It is to insert water in your mouth. Basically, you purposely take water, insert it in your mouth with your palm, and what do you do? You shake the water inside, you move the water. Tahrik, it is to move the water, to bring action on the mouth with the water. Regardless of how clean your mouth might be, no saliva, no nothing, you have to ensure that you move the water. Now the question is, if someone would do madmada by literally just sticking their mouth on the tap, they stick their mouth on the tap, would that be accepted as madmada? No, it is not regarded as madmada. لأن المضمضة ماذا؟ وإذ مضمضة هو أخذ الماء باليد وإدخاله على الفم. It is taking water, basically taking water using the hand and inserting it or inserting the water 
in the mouth. That's what it is. And then after that, that is action number one. There are three parts of it. Part number one is taking the water by the palm and then inserting it into the mouth is number two. And number three, it is the movement of the, um, the, the water in the mouth, left and right, left and right. And then after that, number four, it is spitting it out. If you swallow it, that is not regarded as madmada as well. You have to spit it out, inshallah ta'ala. So that takes us as number two. What about number three? According to Ala Hasabi Shaykhana Al Ashmawi Al Rifai Yaqul, number three is Al Istin Shaku. But there is a link between Al Istin Shaku wal Istin Tharu, which is number three and four. Wa Ibn Ashir, who you are Tibuha, Kakada Yan Yaqulu, Madmada to Stin Shaku, Nistin Tharu, Tertibu for Dihi, Wada Al Muhtaru. Madmada, we've explained about Madmada, which is gargling water. And then he mentions Istin Shaku. Al istintharu, istinshaq un istintharu. What does that mean? Istinshaq, it is 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 inhaling water. You take water and you go, you inhale water. But it doesn't mean you go so deep that you end up hurting your um your pipes or your nostrils all the way to your brain. You don't do that. That's not right. You might even cause yourself a problem. So what you do is use your right hand. Use your right hand. So what does the sharh give us? The sharh gives us. That it is Ewa. The Sharh explains to us that an yajil di balma abi amfihi wa infiruhu binafsihi wa usbuaihi wa yubali rugayru saim wa ankara malik turka wada yadihi wada yadihi wa ala amfihi indahu. Okay. Now, what he explains to us is that when it comes to sniffing the water, you ensure that you don't sniff really hard, number one. And how do you sniff? You sniff by using your right hand. You take the water with your right hand and you sniff it. Remember when we said at the very beginning after washing your hands, you have to get water and water is only got you cannot you, you can only get water by what by using your using your right hand hand using your right hand not your left because it is not the sunnah not your left because it is not the sunnah now when it comes to istinshaq istinshaq is in in is inhaling water so you inhale water you don't go very deep but when it comes to exhaling there are two things number one number one is you have to use your two which is the index finger and your thumb you use those to hold on to your nose and number two you blow out and that is known to be istinthar that is known to be istinthar which takes us to sunnah number four sunnah number four and he explains to us something really really simple when we talk about istinshaq he says that وَهُوَ جَذْبُ الْمَاءِ بِالْأَنْفِ مِنَ الْأَنْفِ okay. وَالْإِسْتِنْثَارُ كَذَلِكَ وَالْإِسْتِنْثَارُ هُوَ إِخْرَاجُ الْمَاءِ مِنَ الْأَنْفِ It is to let go, exit the water and let it go from the from the nose and that's it because you shouldn't be keeping the water in the nose you have to let it go that takes us to number four so what did we say number one we said that what do you do you wash all over your hands up to the elbows number two, up to the sorry up to the wrist number two it is to gargle water and they are shurut arba'an shurut lil madmadati and we said number one is what is to get water with your right hand number two is to gar is to insert it into your mouth number three is to gargle the water number four is to spit it out istinshaq and istinthar which is three and four they're related because istinthar istinshaq is literally to get water with your right hand and inhale it but then when it comes to istinthar is to exit the water to remove the water by using your index finger and your thumb or if you're left hand and you go all right the water goes out inshallah ta'ala that's how you do it that leaves us with four more that leaves us with four more and we're gonna come to mention them inshallah ta'ala right now and of those four of those four it is what did we say in order for you to have a complete wudu, you need to understand exactly that there are obligations of wudu, there are sunan of wudu, and there are fada'il of wudu, isn't it? Now, among the sunans, or sunans of wudu, it is raddu mashir rasi. It is to return on the washing of the head, on, on the wiping of the head. Basically, if you did this, you touched your um, your ear studs, and then you started from the very beginning all the way to the end. You, the sunnah is to return back up. 
That is the sunnah. If you started from the bottom and you came up, the sunnah is to return back down. Basically, whatever direction you go, you must return back. And to repeat the wiping of the head, inshaAllah ta'ala. It's as simple as that. And that is muntahal mashi limabda'ihi. Literally, from the very end of where you stopped, you go back all the way to the very beginning of where you started, depending on how you started. That is point what point would it be? That will be um, Sunnah number 5. That will be Sunnah number 5. Now there is something that we need to mention as well. There is something about Mas'hul Udhunayn. Mas'hul Udhunayn takes us to another two more Sunnahs. It takes us to another two more Sunnahs. And if we add those two, it will be 6 and 7, right? 6 and 7. What do we have? Mas'hul Udhunayn, it is the wiping of the ears. Wiping the ears, literally from on the inside, all of this, Okay, and the outside is a sunnah. وَلَيْسَ فَرِيضَةً It is not a fard. It is not a fard. It's a what? It's a sunnah. لَكِنْ هُنَاكَ سُنَنٌ تَتَّبِعُهَا There is a sunnah that follows it. And what is the sunnah? As you finish wiping your head, Al-Ashmawiyah explains it, but Ibn Ashir does not. And as Ashmawiyah, he explains it, رحمه الله, وَمَسْحُ الْأُذِنَيْنِ ظَاهِرُهُمَا وَبَا ظَاهِرِهِمَا وَبَاطِنِهِمَا That is number one, wiping the ears, basically, on the inside and the outside. On the inside and the outside. And number seven, تَجْدِيدُ الْمَا إِلَهُمَا And that is to do what? To renew the water for wiping the ears. You have to renew the water for wiping the ears. If I am not wrong, the Ahnaf, or the Shafi'iyah, while they do wudu and wipe over the head. By the way, the Shafi'iyah, they just do ba'dul ras, some of the head, when it comes to wiping, even if it's thalatha sha'arat, three hairs, khalas. Lakin al-muhim, ma na'khud min, mathalan, min madhabi, min al-madhabi al-hanafiyya, from the Hanafiyya school of thought, you notice that, when it comes to wiping the head, they wipe, and then the same hands they use to do what? To wipe their ears at the same time. But when it comes to wiping your ears, um, renewing the water is of utmost importance, insha'Allah ta'ala. Bear that in mind. Which takes us to the very last, a little bit awkward sunnah. Very last, quite awkward sunnah. And that shows us that the madhab in itself is quite relaxed, mashallah, tabarakallah. And if you find that the madhab is quite relaxed, it makes life easier for each one of us that we know when to apply what and when and what and when not to. So for example, I gave this example before if I'm not wrong, but I would mention it again so that you can remember. Imagine if you were on a journey, then you entered McDonald's because maybe there were no other shops open at the time, and you literally are... And you're not, you want to go help yourself, relieve yourself, but at the same time you have to do wudu because you haven't, let's say, prayed Salat al -Dhuhr. Imagine that. Now when Salat time enters, you want to do wudu. There is no wudu area and it's literally on a public place, public toilet. What do you do then? This is what you do. Look at how relaxed the madhab is. You know that at tartibu sunnah, at tartibu sunnah, following a sequence of order is a sunnah. وليس بفرضن, وليس بفرضن. لو كان فرض لكان الأمر غير غير هكذا. If it was to be فرض, the matter wouldn't be not like how you see like how you see it right now. The matter would have been if you do not wash your face, or maybe you forgot washing your face and you did your arms all the way to the elbows, and as you're doing wudu, you realize that you haven't wiped your face, then that means your entire wudu is invalid, you have to start again. But what makes the madhab to be more relaxed is the fact that if one forgets to do the obligation, one of the obligatory parts of wudu when it comes to the limbs, what do they do? They are forgiven and they just carry on from where they are and they finish off with the rest of the other limbs inshaAllah ta'ala. That's why we have at tartibu being among the sunnas. So if you've gone to McDonald's and you've entered the toilets and the toilets are quite small, cannot accommodate for everyone, what do you do? Start with the one that people do not like the most And that is washing your feet so Wash your feet first There's nothing wrong Then you can follow the tartib, the order When it comes to the remainder inshallah ta'ala That takes us to number 8 Now to summarize each one of these inshallah You notice that it is ghaslul yadayni first of all You start your wudu And we mentioned that ghaslul yadayn It is ta'abbudan laysa laha hikmah Washing, um, washing the hands is something that we do out of worship and there is no wisdom behind it. Like specific wisdom? No. 
is as long as it's a command from Allah علينا أن 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 نتبعه أن 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 نتبعه ما يريده الله تبارك وتعالى ونطيعه if it came from Allah it's our duty to follow without questioning at all that makes it number one number two it is المضمضة and we explain the rules of doing what of doing um, gargling and we explained الاستنشاق والاستنثار which makes them two as a complete of four استنشاق is to inhale water without hurting your nostrils and your brain and ensuring that when you exhale you use your index and your um, thumb from your left hand and you blow out from your nose as simple as that inshallah ta'ala and then after that we have something called raddu mashir ra'si and that is to repeat the wiping of the head from where you stopped muntaha al-mash bin muntaha al-mash li mabda'ihi or ila mabda'ihi what do you do you start for example if you started from here all the way to the back you start from the back all the way to the top uh, again, that's how you do it according to the sunnah. So you don't just randomly go boop, 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 like that, thinking that that's how you're going to do um, a way uh, that's going to be the right way of wiping your head. La hasha wa kalla, it wouldn't. So the sunnah is teaching us, okay, if we have to wipe our heads as a fard, how we wipe the head, as long as it's the whole head, is fine. But the sunnah now teaches now the adab of wiping the head, and that is if we're going to start from the bottom to up, then we go back as well and in the fadilah you come to notice something amazing in regards to wiping the head inshallah ta'ala and it's as simple as that then we have mashul udhunayn and that is to wipe the ears vahirihima the outer of the ear and the inside of the ear this is the inside this is the inside and this is the outside surface that's what you do but also remember tajdeedul ma ilahuma sunnah to renew the water for wiping the ears it's a sunnah and that makes it sunnah number seven, which allows us to conclude with the fact that if you do a tartib on your wudu, you follow a sequence on your wudu every day, your wudu is not only valid, it's 150% valid. Um, if you follow the tartib, if you don't follow the tartib, and if you follow the tartib, it's a sunnah in itself, insha'Allah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from us and allow us to be a people of understanding that literally, as we um, as we try to do ibadah, we do it for his sake. And we understand that not everything that we do has to have a wisdom behind it. As long as he's commanded us, we have to follow it. No questions. Remember, just like washing the hands, it is ta'ala. There is no hikmah. And the rest of the other ibadat should be in that fashion. As long as Allah wants it, we deliver. That's why we say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We heard and we obeyed. Ya Allah, we heard and we obeyed. وَهَذَا هُوَ الْأَهَمْ وَهَذَا هُوَ الْأَهَمْ Allah ta'ala. That is the most important thing. So now you know how to do the sunnahs. What's quite amazing is when we look at the fadail, there are so many masail that we have to look at inshaAllah ta'ala. That we, for example, how do we avoid entering into a makruh when it comes to our wudu? How do we avoid shak when it comes to our wudu. How do we wudu wudu on a clean place? What is determined to be a clean place? What is determined to be clean water? And how do you fulfill the rest of your wudu? When it comes to wipe, washing, washing your feet to the ankles, <coughs> there is something known as a fadila. There is something known as a fadila. But what is it when it comes to washing your feet? If you want to do the prophetic um, wudu, then you have to try your best to know exactly the obligations of wudu, the sunnahs of wudu, the fada'il of wudu, and act upon every single one of those as long as you have the time, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a people of listening to that which is beneficial and making use of it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our deeds and all of our efforts. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. See you inshallah ta'ala on another lesson. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم خلق الله السماوات والأرض بالحق إن في ذلك لآية للمؤمنين أتل ما أوحي إليك من الكتاب وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون